Our tutorial, Decision Tree Regression. Supervised machine learning consists of finding which class output target data belongs to or predicting its value by mapping its optimal relationship with input predictors data. Main supervised learning tasks are classification and regression. This topic is part of regression machine learning with our course. Feel free to take a look at course curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of the video. Decision tree regression consists of supervised learning algorithm for predicting output target feature by optimal recursive binary splitting of output target and input predictor features data into incrementally smaller nodes. Top node is root node, internal nodes are decision nodes, and terminal nodes are leaf nodes. Tree pruning and time series cross-validation are used for lower invariance error source generated by a greater model complexity. For full reference, I recommend that you read Bryman, Friedman, Ocean and Stone, Classification and Regression Trees, published by CRC Press in 1984. Classification and Regression Trees algorithm consists of greedy top-down approach for finding optimal recursive binary node splits by locally minimizing variance at terminal nodes measured through sum of square errors function at each stage. As a formula, the minimization of sum of square errors is equal to those corresponding sum of square errors are equal to the sum from the first to the last of the differences between the output target feature data minus the terminal node output target feature mean and that result to the power of 2. The terminal node output target feature mean in turn is equal to 1 divided by m, m is the number of observations within the terminal node, multiplied by the sum from the first to the last of the output target feature data. Great, so let's go into R Studio so that we can study decision tree regression with greater detail. Excellent, so here we are within R Studio. The first step within the tutorial is to load its packages. For it, we'll be using quanmod and tree, and we load them with this library function. So we select these two code lines, click run or control enter on the keyboard. The next step is we need to create this decision tree regression data. For that, we do data reading, we create the variable data, and we use read.csv function. Then within it, we have the name of the data file, decision tree regression data.txt. This is a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values stored within the project directory, comma header equals to true. So we select the code line, click run or control enter on the keyboard. So we create this data object within the global environment as a data frame. If we click on the spreadsheet kind of icon here, we open the data object which has two columns dates and SPY adjusted. SPY corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle which intends to replicate the standard Poor's 500 index. Adjusted because they are the adjusted close prices which were adjusted for dividends and splits. And here we have data from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2015. Therefore, nine years of data. So going back into the code file, the next step is we're going to create a variable, which we are going to name SPY as the ETF investment vehicle, and then we have here as an XTS or extensible time series type of object in which we select from data, the second column, and we order by equals as date data on the first column. So we create this variable here by selecting the code line, clicking run or control enter on the keyboard. So notice that now we created SPY object as an XTS or extensible time series. And if we click on the spreadsheet kind of icon, it opens SPY, which is equivalent to that data object. But notice that now the dates became the index. So going back into the code file, the next steps within this data is, first we're going to create target and predictor features. So for this corresponding decision tree regression, the target feature are going to be 
this SPY daily return. So we create the variable RSPY equals to daily return of SPY and this calculates the arithmetic returns. Then we create the predictor feature, which are going to be previous days returns. So we create RSPY1 equals to lag RSPY with K equals to 1. And then we bring them together into one data frame, which we named RSPY all, which is equal to C bind or column bind. And then we have RSPY, RSPY1. We rename its columns with C for columns, RSPY and RSPY1. And last, we remove any rows with non-availables within them with NA.exclude. So we select this code lines, we click run or control enter on the keyboard, which again is equivalent. The next step with this data is we are going to delimit training and testing ranges. So as an example, for educational purposes, which can be modified according to your needs, we're going to divide data within the training range for the first seven years of data and the testing range as the last two years of data. For this tutorial, we'll only be using the training range for the decision tree regression. So as mentioned, we created two variables, RSPYT for training range, RSPYF for testing range, and we'll be using window function. And for RSPY all, the training range ends at the beginning of 2014, as mentioned, the first seven years of data, and the testing range starts at the beginning of 2014, therefore the last two years of data. So we select those two code lines, we click run or control enter on the keyboard, which again is equivalent. So now that we have all the data ready, we can continue with decision tree regression. For its calculation, we create this variable, which is named DTT for decision tree. And notice that it's calculated within the train range. That's why we have that second T and we use tree function. Within it, we have the following. First, the target feature, RSPY, being explained by the predictor feature, RSPY1, and the data we'll be using is RSPYT, the one from the training range. So we select the code line there and then click run or control enter on the keyboard, and that calculated the decision tree regression. So let's go ahead and print results for it. So we have DTT with the dollar sign, we get its frame. And then we're going to plot that DTT together with its text. So we select these three code lines, click run or control enter on the keyboard. So notice here that we have the chart to the right. That's our corresponding decision tree regression chart. Notice that it only did one split. Therefore, we have the top node and two terminal nodes or leaf nodes. We don't have any intermediate or decision nodes. Notice that the corresponding threshold for the split is this value right over here. And also looking at the frame, we have the following. At this first row, we have, as mentioned, the top node or root node. Within it, we have the corresponding threshold for left and right, which is found right here. We have Y value, that's the arithmetic mean of the target feature data within that training range. Then we have the calculation of its deviation. That's the one we are minimizing for the calculation. And that corresponds to the sum of square errors. Those sum of square errors are the difference between the target feature data minus its arithmetic mean to the power of two. Then we go into the next row. That's the corresponding terminal node leaf. That's the one we have right here on the left. And the Y values are, as we can see here, that's the arithmetic mean of the target feature data found within those corresponding rows where the predictor feature is less than the threshold. And then we have here the corresponding deviation which is, again, the sum of square errors, which we want to minimize, of the corresponding target feature data. In this case, the one found at the rows where the predictor feature data is less than that threshold minus the corresponding Y value. And then we have the third row here, in all cases with the sum of square errors, minus that Y value to the power of two. 
and then in the third row we have the second leaf or terminal node the one which is found right here to the right and first we have the y value that's the corresponding arithmetic mean of the target feature data found at those corresponding rows where the predictor feature data was greater than the threshold and then we have together with it the corresponding deviation again the one we want to minimize and that's the sum of square errors which are the difference between the corresponding target feature data at the rows where the predictor feature data was greater than the corresponding threshold minus the corresponding y value we just explained again because there are some of square errors they are done to the power of two excellent so now that we finish studying decision tree regression let's go back into our slides and as mentioned previously this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please, pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.